Mass Effect 2. The game is included in Wikipedia's list of video games considered the best article, which in itself I have issues with. Where the devil is Xenoblade Chronicles, Sonic Adventure and Crash to name a few? You would think ME2, that's what I'm calling it, wouldn't have many faults. However, that couldn't be further from the truth. Is it a great game? Yes, but it's also a buggy mess. Before you charge up your blaster, I'll have you know I played this game on EA's Origin PC launcher. I also installed three mods, a lot of textures, ironically looking at YouTube comparisons that only provide subtle improvements to the graphics. It couldn't stop the game looking very dim though. ME2 controller, self-explanatory and ME2 recalibrated, which is an overhaul for Mass Effect 2 that fixes bugs and broken lore, rectifies poorly implemented content, restores cut materials Material and in a few small cases adds new content to the game. Their words not mine. I'm still not sure what it means. What caused the Mass Effect trilogy to gain so much hype by a lot of over ecstatic game journalists back in the day was the save file transfer. This allowed you to import your character from a previous game. The decisions your character made would impact the story of the later games. Emmy Andromeda stopped this trend, the black sheep of the family. I didn't use it. Why? Because I wanted to make Iron Shepherd. That's why. I like to think he sort of resembles the dapper hipster Robert Downey Jr. You can't change the voices, but these heroes all sound the same anyway. I chose the Sentinel class to emphasize Tony Stark's reliance on the suit. I even made it look the part. This class started me off with a pistol, SMG and some bionic abilities such as letting me throw someone like a ragdoll. Great! Already I've limited myself to any short range combat. The game states only ME2 veterans should play in the hardest difficulty. However, this is the only mode that challenged me and I'm pretty mediocre at shooters. Difficulty can be changed at any time to suit your playstyle, not that I had to. Combat involves shooting behind cover like in COD, the brown grey one, not the fish. A lot of times you can't shoot when snapped to cover. You have to move to a part that you can, usually half cover that leaves you more vulnerable to incoming fire. A large portion of your time is spent listening to sci-fi babble, which can be interesting but mostly went over my head. Science nerds love it. Tap X on the Xbox controller or whatever you're using to skip dialogue if th this bores you. If you want to know what the hell is going on in this complex universe, look to your heavily detailed codec which explains the lore of alien races, weapons and locations set by the first game. You can talk to countless NPCs and form relationships but I really don't care. They're all boring. I just want to shoot aliens and use bionic powers. Leveling up is simplified. It's best to upgrade everything evenly rather than actually plan how to best invest your skills. Terminals are everywhere. Hack them by doing the same two repetitive easy puzzles to get money. Also scan planets to get resources to spend on upgrades. At least they can be breezed through quickly. As in ME1 you choose two bodies to accompany you at a time. Completing missions levels up your squad so you don't have to keep picking the same two bodies to grind. Loyalty missions for each squad member are available which unlocks something tasty when completed, like a new power or weapon. The mortality system is back! Choose to be a goody two shoes, a normie or a bastard by choosing sentences while enduring heavy dialogue. There's no buggy this time. A shame I enjoyed impossibly driving up vertical mountains in the first game. ME2 focuses more on new characters like the mysterious elusive man. Who you now work for since he brought you back to life and all that. Some old hands return like Joker, not that one or that other one. Who had a much bigger role in ME1 and is barely shown here. Dozy players must have gone gotten lost in the first game because now when I click my stick the radar points me in the right direction. When Shepard spots an item in the distance your HUD will tell you what it is. Useful to know whether it's worth running up to. Maybe these features were in the first game and I was too dozy to notice. ME2's main campaign lasts just under 40 hours. A massive repetitive universe. Countless planets though only some can be explored. This would have been a fantastic opportunity to show some widely different landscapes of these unique worlds. Instead action almost always takes place inside similarly structured buildings 
buildings. We may as well have been on Earth this whole time. What about my graphics? ME2 is duller than a rowdy schoolboy, and I'm not just talking about the story. The colour palette isn't the most pleasing on the eye. They went for the realistic look, an approach which always looks dated a decade later. Models and environments are detailed for 2010, as expected of a AAA experience. Unlike ME1, you can't adjust graphical settings by turning off motion blur. Not that it'll bother you too much as Shepard sets into his old man jog. Glitches, where'd I begin? There's two missions which are bug the hey heaven. The recruiting Morden one sees enemies floating in the air. This made them easy pickings but made me feel unclean like I had stolen 10 pounds from my mother's purse. Later during Morden's this guy. Loyalty mission. I walked under a beam structure, not the laser, and suddenly teleported on top of it. I tried everything, but Shepard was frozen on one spot like a cat stuck up a tree. I had to reload my autosave file as saving during the glitch just resulted in me being stuck in the same boat when I loaded it up again. The worst part is the same thing happened again at the exact same spot. How did developers not spot this? My favourite was when dealing with the long, difficult task of protecting Garen. He he suddenly melted into a puddle on the floor and ME2 crashed. Be sure to manual save often just in case. I don't trust autosave in games. I'm not done! The audio got messed up in a mission when I was being fired at with rocket launchers. Also, anytime I unplugged my headphones, my PC couldn't play sound in my speakers or headphones when I plugged them back in and I had to reboot the game. ME2 has a subtle soundtrack, so subtle that I forgot it was playing. It's only when sound was cut by a glitch that I noticed noticed it was gone. It wasn't annoying music but it didn't stand out either. In my opinion ME2 takes a few steps backwards in what made the first game great. Removing the buggy vehicle not glitch sections, more focus on indoors, adding weak puzzles and Jacob. That said it made some improvements like removing time consuming elevators and offering more choices for your abilities and weapons. Why can't I just use all of them though? If you loved ME1 you'll get a similar experience here but don't expect it to break new ground. I give it a B. Solid experience but not spectacular. There was too much repetition, similar rooms, enemy fights and puzzles. I've been very negative on it in this review. That's because most of what I think is what I said in my Mass Effect 1 review. The game doesn't stray much from that formula. So if you want to know most of the positives of this game, just watch my Mass Effect 1 review. Thanks for watching. Hello guys, hope you're having a fantastic day. If you enjoyed the video, Make sure to leave a like and to subscribe for more videos. Bye!